The Chandra facility was actually named after a very famous astrophysicist who worked uh, in the 20th century. His name was Subramanian Chandra Sekhar, and that was all very hard for those of us in astronomy to say, but he was known uh, among all of my colleagues as Chandra. We launched at night on STS-93 based on the requirements that the Chandra Observatory had uh, for its final orbit. And at T-minus 31 seconds, the ground launch sequencer will issue a go to Columbia's onboard computers to start their own automatic sequence. At the 10 second mark, the spark igniters near the main engine nozzles will burn off any residual gaseous hydrogen. And the final command from the ground computers will come at T-minus 10 seconds, which is a go for engine start. And the three engines are actually started at about the T minus 6.6 .6 second mark and come up to full thrust before the two boosters are ignited right at the T minus zero mark. A profile test of the orbiter's aero surfaces has started and the engines will be gimbaled in position for launch. Flight crew, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. A few days delayed, but same enthusiastic launch team wishing Columbia's crew success on your mission. OTC the CDL. We've got our visors and our O2s. Thanks for all the great work, and we'll see you in five days. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We have a goal for engine start. Zero. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Columbia, reaching new heights for women in X-ray astronomy. Goal for engine start, zero. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Columbia, reaching new heights for women in X-ray astronomy. Columbia is in the role. We've got a fuel cell position number one. Roger roll, Columbia. We're looking at Columbia. Used to be like 80 bus sensors off. We're evaluating the fuel cell. Columbia looks like we had a transient on AC1. Columbia is now headed downrange, altitude 3.8 miles. Three engines throttling down, all at 67 percent. Columbia, Houston, we are critical to AC2 on the center engine, AC3 on the right. We've lost DCU-A on the center and DCU-B on the right. And Columbia, Houston, you are go at throttle up. Columbia, go at throttle up. And all three engines are back at uh, full throttle. We're approaching one minute, 50 seconds into the flight. Columbia now uh, has burned uh, more than two million pounds of fuel and weighs half of what it did at launch. SRB separation is confirmed. Booster officer reports uh, he's seeing throttling now on the main engines as the uh, vehicle approaches three times gravity. Columbia's velocity is up to 15,000 miles per hour. Downrange uh, 760 miles, altitude 67 miles. And the booster officer reports a good uh, main engine cutoff. And the main engine's cut off. We're in zero G. We separate the tank and we're orbiting the Earth. The OMS-1 not required and it's great to be back in zero G again. And there will be no OMS-1 burn required. The standard OMS-2 burn, uh, of course, is required to nearly circularize Columbia's orbit at 155 by 153 nautical mile orbit. Uh, that will be the operating orbit for the uh, virtually the entire five-day mission of Columbia. About one hour and a half after um, ascent, we open the payload bay door and that allowed us to see uh, Chandra outside. And after we conducted uh, the power up of uh, Chandra in order to have electricity and uh, heating to the satellite. Now we're going to actually tilt it up um, from the back of the bay up above the nose of the shuttle there, and you're looking at the deploy of the Chandra X-ray Observatory, third in a series of four of the family of the great observatories. We deployed the Chandra on day one, and it's not just the Chandra telescope, but also the booster rocket that is attached uh, to one end of the Chandra. And much of our day one activities uh, surround trying to check out the inertial upper stage, make sure that it is completely ready to take Chandra to its final orbit. It's not something that moves out all that fast. It's about uh, maybe uh, 
one foot every three seconds or so. Now Eileen is getting ready to actually back the shuttle away from the Chandra and we'll actually do a series of maneuvers to um, get away from the Chandra and the inertial upper stage before the inertial upper stage fires uh, the first and then the second of its two solid rocket motors to then take the Chandra into its highly elliptical orbit, which is not close to the Earth as we are, but about a third of the way to the moon, so a very large elliptical orbit.